Thank you very much. Um, we'll do it in English, as our master program is uh, English and Russian, or Russian and English. So we follow also uh, for this in the summer school. And I hope uh, for those of you who may not uh, get 100% what I'm saying in English, we have uh, interpreters who hopefully will give you some, some good uh, interpretation. So today, we actually starting the real school. Yesterday was more official, uh, which is also needed on the higher level, so the government and, and all our partners, university, rector, uh, know what we're doing. But today, as the first uh, uh, lecture and interactive discussion, I hope, uh, we're getting uh, deep to the we're jumping to the deep water because we're starting from the issue which is, which is kind, kind of um, new in Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. Uh, it's an approach and the concept, what we call a holistic approach to follow up to human rights mechanism recommendations. I hope that all of you know what the human rights are uh, and what the mechanisms are and uh, I will try to explain a little bit more about the recommendations and uh, follow up. And in any time, this is not like a serious official uh, lecture or presentation. So like you, you are strongly encouraged to stop me if you not understand something or you have, or you have questions to explain. Uh, that's is about the learning. It's not me telling you what I know, but I'm starting some discussion and you asking the questions. I hope, and, and I hope we'll have enough time, uh, actually how much time we have. So, so we, have a, we have a discussion. So, okay, let's go next. So what, why is important to follow up? And what is a follow-up? What we call it in UN human rights system, a follow-up. Uh, follow-up is basically a process which is uh, following different recommendations coming from human rights mechanisms. As you know, I mean, I will go to details like about the, what mechanisms they are, but, but that's basically follow-up as a process. So the follow-up activities are aiming to ensure that all the recommendations and decisions by human rights mechanisms uh, bodies are implemented and why, they, why you want them implemented. It's not to just tick and say we implemented, we're happy and everything is fine. No, the idea is then to improve respect, protection, and fulfillment of all human rights for all. It means like all human rights, what we know, to all people all over the world. And uh, those human rights mechanisms, main role and, uh, is to improve, again, improve human rights in the countries of the world. The next, uh, the next one, I mean, we still try to uh, unpack and understand why to follow up and why it's important to follow up. Um, the resolutions adopted by the human rights mechanism and recommendations, uh, they aim to close protection gaps and help states indicate to states and other stakeholders how to advance to full realization of human rights. And the difficulty is that those recommendations are uh, asking member states to change. And any change, as you know, in your life is difficult. If you want to learn a language or if you want to become somebody else, than you are. Let's say you want to go from law to the medicine. It will take time. So, so that's a difficulty because the recommendations are saying you should do this or you should become 
a nicer person, but you're not a nice person. So that's the, that's the resistance from the states to, to do those changes. So when you have recommendations, which are very, you know, good, elaborate, and so on, the member states' first reaction, as our reaction as human beings, say, no, I want to be myself. You know, I don't want to listen to my mom to say, you need to clean your room. Yes, I want to have my room messy, you know, so why I should change? So that's the, that's the difficulties of implementing those uh, recommendations. And as you know, uh, I hope, or you, you will learn soon, uh, then there are several different types of human rights mechanisms in the UN system. And those mechanisms, as they, uh, some of our experts are here, uh, they, they very engage individuals, those bodies working a lot, and they produce a lot of recommendations because they want, as we say in the previous uh, slide, they want, the aim is to improve life and respect for human rights all over the world. So those people who sit on the committees, those uh, uh, special rapporteurs, I can bet you, I mean, we have, we have member here and, uh, and another professor will come um, later in, in, in this morning. I can tell you, they work a lot. They work a lot, they produce a lot of recommendations, they travel, they have visits, meetings, and so on. So the number of recommendations and quality of recommendations, it's, it's big. Okay, let's go now to you know, what mechanisms we have. So in the international human rights mechanism, we have basically two streams. One stream is uh, charter-based bodies. It means uh, charter of United Nations. And under this, we have Human Rights Council. From your Human Rights Council, uh, we have special procedures and universal periodic review. So those charter-based bodies, Human Rights Council, special procedures, universal periodic review, they produce different recommendations, decisions, opinions. So that's the one element of human rights mechanism. The other stream on the right-hand side is treaty-based body, treaty bodies. Uh, and, and this is basically, as you know, the, the international human rights law, it's based on treaties, international conventions and covenants. And some of those uh, conventions, uh, they already establish a uh, follow, following up mechanism and the committees uh, and other uh, groupings, which then again, in turns, they look on the convention, which is a law, then they look on the state, how the convention is implemented or not, and then they produce, they engage with the state with all this uh, process. Is this clear so far? I'm moving too fast. Okay, with the, as I said, with the Charter of Human Rights Bodies, it's just repeating, it's Human Rights Council, Special Procedures, and Universal Periodic Review. For those who don't know, yes. This one? Okay. It's okay for the interpreters? I'm talking too fast. Okay, that's... So, again, just repeat. So, what is this Human Rights Council? Um, it's a principal United Nations body responsible for human rights. It's composed of 47 member states, which meet at, at least three, in three sessions per year in Geneva. And the main role includes strengthening promotion and protection of human rights around the globe, everywhere, and making recommendations to address violations of human rights, including gross and systematic violations. 
And our office, which I work for, and, and uh, around 1,000 colleagues uh, around the world, uh, we serve as a secretariat for the Human Rights Council. Uh, the next uh, charter base human rights bodies is special procedures. Special procedures uh, are independent experts, uh, which we call like special rapporteurs. They are appointed by Human Rights Council and they are not UN staff. So basically, they, they main word here is independent. They, they cannot serve any interest of the state, or no UN, nor somebody else. And I can tell you some of our human rights, I mean, I can tell you a secret, some of our special rapporteurs, they are too independent. You know, like they, they even don't want to talk to us. They say, no, 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 we, we cannot even tell you where we're going, what we're doing. So, so, uh, so sometimes it's creating some, some problems, but why? Why independence is important? Because they should give very objective picture and recommendation to the member states what's happening in the country on specific rights. So for example, uh, Olga, when, when you were here with Farida, it was 2012, uh, the special rapporteur on, on uh, on cultural right, rights was here in Kazan, and, uh, and, and basically that's also how they work. They come, they meet with the government, with civil society, with uh, specialists, with academics, and they assess the state of implementation or respect for specific rights which are, which they mandate, which are mandated. So for example, you see in the picture we have a special rapporteur on water, and uh, sanitation, and of course others. So, there's a lot of them, those special procedures. We have 41 thematic procedures. Uh, 10 are around civil and political rights. Then, like racism, independence of judges and lawyers, human rights defenders, peaceful assembly, uh, freedom of expression, freedom of religion, torture, summary executions. Then, as you see, we have the most, that's the topic of our school this year, we have 13 on economic, social, and cultural rights, and issues like food, education, housing, toxic waste, environment, poverty, foreign debt, promotion of democratic and equitable international order, international solidarity, water and sanitation, and cultural rights. Then we have 12 focusing on specific groups like migrants, internally displaced persons, violence against women, children, minorities, indigenous population, trafficking, slavery, and older person. And the list is growing. We can share with this presentation with you, so you can, you can have it later on if you, if you want. Um, so they focus on specific group and the, uh, groups, and, uh, and the list is growing, because it's, uh, as the body of human rights is expanding and the issues are expanding, then uh, the groups in focus uh, also um, expand. Then there are six working groups, uh, which is not like a one person, it's a group. So it's like a group of experts which they focus on specific issues like uh, people of African descent, discrimination against women in law and practice, or transnational corporation. In addition to thematic special procedures, the uh, Human Rights Council also, you know, in some specific cases, they, they mandate special rapporteur or independent expert on countries or ter territories. It's usually 
those countries or territories are either in conflict or are disputed territories. So as you see on the list, uh, there's quite a lot of them, and then they regularly report to Human Rights Council on the rights uh, in those countries or territories. How special procedure works? Um, they usually have two, three country visit per year, like different countries. Then they either uh, are accepting standing invitation or they ask the state to invite them to visit. And here there is a, there's a bit of problem because in some of those states which are, let's say, the, the special procedures or special rapporteurs would like to visit, they will say, well, we're not ready for you to come. So basically the main, the main um, approach is to work with the member states to issue like a standing invitation, open invitation. Basically, a country is saying, we are inviting all special, you know, thematic procedures uh, to come, like openly, without any, any selection. Uh, but there's, you know, for this it's very few countries who actually do it. Most of the countries, they want to control who is coming and who is not, and uh, choose and pick, you know, like they say they have, they have a request from, from uh, special rapporteurs on human rights defenders, and the country is saying, no, in our country everything is fine with human rights defenders, so we don't need uh, a rapporteur to come. So, so that uh, that's could be the problem, you know, when, for this mechanism. And, uh, for example, in 2013, um, special procedures conduct 79 country visits to 66 countries. And, usually, it's not just one visit, you know, you write a report, you make a recommendations, and then end of the story. It's usually, it's also a follow-up visit. So let's say you have your first visit by the special rapporteur to the country with some recommendations, and then the rapporteur will come after, let's say, two years, it depends, one year, four years, to the same country, go to the same places and say, what happened you know, to my recommendations? To, that's the importance of follow-up. To, you need to follow up because in a lot of cases the, the change what I mentioned in the beginning is not happening and we want this change to improve the, the people, people's rights. And uh, how special procedures uh, follow up on those recommendations. They um, disseminate uh, and translate the country visit report to the, to the national contact network. So basically what they reported in any country they visit, they will translate it and disseminate it to the people and, uh, and the stakeholders. Then they assess the status of implementation of recommendations. Then the opinions, recommendations, proposals and reports, they share it with the government, parliament, or regional parliaments or regional governments to, again, to improve and assist government uh, on improvement on specific area of human rights. Um, and then if, if there is, uh, uh, if the country or the partners are willing, uh, the special procedure also work um, in assisting and formulation of national human rights action plan or other planning activities. So for example, in Russia there is no national, uh, human, is no national human rights action plan because the government is not, how to say, ready or willing to have a all plan for all country. But for example, in Tatarstan, the government of Tatarstan, as you probably heard yesterday, with, uh, from the initiative of the Human Rights Ombudsman in Tatarstan, they prepare and adopt a national, I mean, the Tatarstan Human Rights Action Plan. 
with specific targets in specific issues like education, health, water, housing, employment, child protection, and other issues. So the plan, like anything in life, either we do it spontaneously and we hope we'll achieve, say you want to get, you know, you, you want to get your master program, you just decided one morning, okay, I'm doing master program, that's it, I'm going to university and hopefully I will get there. Or you make a plan, how to do it, you make dates, you make be benchmarks, you know, in this year I will prepare, I will learn, I will, you know, learn English, then I will do this, and then, then you're moving. With the plan, is generally speaking, for the governments, it's easier to work than just without any specific, uh, specific structure. Um, okay, so that was special procedures. Okay, go back. Do you have questions on special procedures? Like anything or like to explain more, uh, give you more examples, what they do, what they not do. Um, I mean, maybe I, I can give you on thematic, on thematic issues, uh, how to say, depends of the thematic mandate. I would say countries will generally accept easier visit of the special rapporteur on cultural rights, generally speaking, than in the country when you have like people disappeared or there is issues with human rights defenders, then the countries attempt not to invite those uh, special procedures or special rapporteurs. And in some thematic, thematic countries uh, mandates, uh, countries basically ignore Human Rights Council. So there are some countries which they are men, you know, there is a special procedure mandated and they will not let them into the country for the visit. So they can only uh, report or look on the situation from outside because the country which they are mandated basically saying this is not right, you, we don't like you or we don't respect the mandate. So, so that's the special procedures. Okay, and now the other charter human rights bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, other charter human rights bodies, as you remember, you know, like they are three. Do you remember which three human rights um, charter by human rights bodies in the beginning? I should go back to the slide. You don't remember. Okay. Um, so the second one is universal periodic review. So universal periodic review is, uh, is basically a mechanism set up by Human Rights Council. So Human Rights Council review on the periodic basis, fulfillment by each of all, basically all United Nations member states. So 193, as per today, member states will get review by each other in the four-year cycle. So there is no country is escaping uh, the review. Okay, how many people are here? Let's say 100. So if we think like each of you is a member state, every four years, if, like four, let's say we'll, group of you will be elected as a council, then uh, you will prepare an opinion about yourself. Say, I'm good on mathematics or on English, everything is fine, I'm, I'm learning perfect. And then you put this document in front of the, the, your colleagues, your peers. It's not, it's not professors, it's like all you. Then, oops, oops. Then, uh, then we, like as a UN, let's say so as like a student council, will prepare an opinion about you. Let's say more objective, what actually you're doing and so on. And the third one will be somebody like your friends, like other organizations saying, well, we know you and so on. And then there is a set time, then the council will basically, you will be in the spot sitting here and then they will say, you do this or that or you should improve in your English or not. And then they put recommendations. So that's how this universal periodic review work. And so it's 
what's, what's interesting in it. So it's not only you are in the spot because, okay, you are in the spot today, but then your colleague next to you will be next day. So basically over four years, you should review all of you. So that's the member state, like all countries will be reviewed by the other countries on their performance. So there is no exception. Some countries are, you know, bigger, better, and they don't need review. It's basically small, big, everybody has the same vote and, and the rights to be reviewed by other countries. Uh, as I said, on like how it's done, it's basically the review of the state is based on the three documents. National report prepared by the state under review. It's basically state ministries gather information on all issues, all human rights. Let's say human rights, uh, rights to education. You know how beautiful education system are, it's all free. Uh, you have the best uh, computers, free Wi-Fi, and basically it's just, you know, beautiful story. Then, uh, then um, rights to health, again, you, know, you have good medicine, doctors are available, you call for the, for the, for the pomosh, they come in three minutes, you go to the hospital, if you get a car accident, then the helicopter will pick you up and, and bring to the good hospital. So, so that's usually what happened in the government report. You know, like they write about positive, most of the governments, they write about positive things because you don't want to write actually some things are not working. Then United Nations, like us, we prepare a compilation of information from different sources, what is public. What is public about the state, about the right to education, right to health, right to uh, other rights? We put it together and it needs to be short. So, so there is a limit how much you can put on, uh, on this report. So it's not like, you know, 1,000 pages, whatever. It needs to be short, concise, precise what is happening. And then the third document is a summary of information submitted by other stakeholders, including civil society, uh, organization, labor, student association. If you, let's say, if you want, if you know there is a uh, universal review process going for Russia and you want to put like a report, you can send it to Geneva as an organization saying, you know, some, some issues which you would like to be raised. And then we will prepare a summary of it. So it will, those three documents is a base for the, for the review. And then the review itself. It's, it's, uh, it's take place uh, in beautiful Geneva session. Then there's a working group. Um, and the working group is composed of the 47 member states. Uh, and it's three and a half hours of interactive dialogue between the state under review and the member uh, and observer states of the council. Um, and after a few days of interactive dialogue, the working groups adopts the report of the proceedings. And what is interesting, okay, you have a, you know, how it's work. You have a presentation of the state, so they have like, some time to just say, you know, about, you know, how the state of human rights in the country is. Uh, and then the states, like other states who are reviewing, they making recommendations. And as I mentioned, you know, in the beginning, like why we're talking about this um, uh, holistic approach to follow up? Because there is a lot of recommendation. And, and to give you an example, like, what's happening now, because the states are very interested to, to make those recommendations. But the time, you know, it's three and a half hours, and uh, everybody wants to talk, and everybody wants to put recommendation, let's say, to Russia, or to Israel, or to US. You know, you should do this, you should abolish death penalty, or you should improve rights of women. But in order, it, how it's work, basically the secretariat, people say, I want to talk. And in like 
two minutes, you have, let's say, 100 people who want to make a recommendation. And then you have like one hour. So how you do it? Very democratically. You have 30 seconds. So, you know, like some of the diplomats initially, I don't know if you, you can actually watch it on the, it's a webcasting. I mean, I will give you the, the link in the end. It will be interesting for you to see. Some of the people, when they start the process, they become diplomatic, you know, like yesterday. You know, like you say, good morning, how, I, I want to thank you, the president, da, da, da. It's already 20 seconds, yes? So I have no time for recommendation. So then people like really fast say, you sh the state, you should do this, 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 this. 40 seconds is over, then it's like your microphone is off. So whatever you say after is not on the record. So, so then the states need to be very strategic. I mean, if you make a recommendation to other states, you need to be very strategic, you know, main recommendation. Also work with other states, like-minded, so you not repeat the same recommendation. You basically meet your friends and they say, you know, we think about uh, children rights, so like why to make 10 times children rights? We may make a, like one recommendation, you know, on, on this area. Okay, and uh, so that was what I was talking about. Uh, and after this uh, dialogue, uh, the working group adopts the reports of the proceeding, like official reports. Um, and then, uh, you know, Human Rights Council, after this uh, adoption of the, of the, um, of the, um, of UPR, UPR outcomes, there is like a general debate, uh, and um, occasionally states also are um, have to have to provide update on the progress. So let's say when the review was four years ago, and this comes a new review, then the member states will ask like, what you did to our recommendation, what you what we recommend to you four years ago. And then, then you can hear answer, like honest or whatever happening. Okay, so that was a UPR process, quickly. The third, uh, like the other, yes? Yes, I have a question. Do I need a microphone or can you yes. hear me? Wait, 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 where is our mic? Where is mic? You need, yeah, you come here, you, you can use this one. Where is the microphone? Where is it? Okay, you, you just say. Yeah. Uh, uh, I see that uh, they uh, answer, uh, the countries answer about uh, what they did, and uh, if uh, we they uh, take the uh, recommendations into consideration. But if not, what are the consequences? So, uh, year after year, uh, not so many, but from 2006, I think that uh, there were several reports. And if the country is systematically... Thank you. If... Okay. No. Mm, later. No. It doesn't work. <laughs> I think okay, you, have, you just talk. I have a loud voice, yes. <laughs> you just talk. So, what are the consequences if countries systematically violate and don't follow up recommendations? Maybe there are mechanisms or what are the no. actions, the responsibility of the actions? Thank you, I have all the things. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, but for the next one, we, we have it. Um, I, thank you. It's a very good question. The simple answer is not a lot. You think. You think. Okay, we have no police. We cannot put you in jail. Uh, but I can tell you, if, if you come here in front of all those people, and I will tell you, you're really lazy and you have uh, bad marks on, uh, I don't know, uh, commercial law, I bet you will avoid to be in the spot in front of everybody. And this is, we're also talking a state, yes? It's not like individual. I can tell you states, okay, 
it's not like they like it, but they try to avoid this sh shame of pointing out. Like we asked you four years ago about the right to education and you did nothing. You know, more or less. I mean, it will be more diplomatic. And of course they can talk. Oh, yeah, we did. Da, da, da. Say, no, sorry. I mean, you didn't. So the, the, the shame or the, the pressure of the peer states, it's very strong because you represent authority. Yes? It's not, it's not like uh, just a person. It's a, you're representing a state. So this is producing slowly, you know, I'm not saying fast. It's, it's not the fast process. It's not like this. Some states are more bet better in, in accepting recommendation. And the one thing I forgot also to mention, then part of this process, some of the recommendation state will not accept. So they are there, but it's something happening. But, uh, but uh, they're not accepting. So they say they not agree with the recommendation. So that means like they, but basically the, there is no, this is not, it's not an absolute mechanism. It's, it's a public opinion. And if, if you repeatedly get, you know, put on the spot by other member states, they are not like, Yeah, yes, big. and uh, and uh, I, I mean yes, it's it's a long long process, and uh, and you need to do it. Um, you know that's why we say constructive dialogue, because just shaming and making confrontation, you will close down. You say I don't care. You know you tell whatever bad things, I will not react. But we want the state you to be engaged, so we want to give you a way to save your face. So we're not like really putting like you totally, you know, we say, well, the, some things are bad, but some things are start working well. So like we give you a door to start improving. And uh, as I said, some of the states, they have less ego and they are more listening and they're more willing to do. Some of the states, they have big ego and they say, well, oh, thank you very much. And they do, um, you know, like, um, you know, in politics, let's say, if I don't want, if I'm a politician and you ask me something like a journalist and I don't want to answer your question, you know what they do? You answer indirectly? No, I answer, you know, I, I say something like this. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, but I can tell you we have a beautiful human rights master program in uh, Russia and we have a summer school. So I'm not answering your question, but I'm doing so smooth that you not even notice. Then, I mean, of course you notice, but the public not notice then. So you basically talk, 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 talk. But uh, yeah, it's a long process, but uh, in the longer term, they are changes. Because like, you know, like you said, after repeated recommendation, not follow up on recommendation, most of the states will react. Although they will admit, they will not admit. Yeah, that's that's what we yeah that's what we do. That's that's what I that's what this process is about to to holistically follow up, put all the different recommendations from all the bodies. That's our work. That's what we paid for to to go back, you know, and and also again work with states. You know, like we see like you're not performing this well because different bodies, different human rights mechanisms, telling you improve health in your country, and you were like. Mm. So we say, look, you know, maybe you do this. Maybe you start in some areas. Maybe you do this. So, so we do it. We, that's, that's our role. That's the role of UN to, to be like a friendly reminder, you know, like, you thought, you know, like yesterday was a deadline for the paper which you should deliver. Maybe you can work on it a little bit with us. We can help you, but, you know, so because it's, it's interactive. You, it's not confront, you cannot confront. If you confront, then you have a politics then you have Cold War, you know, then you have those issues. This is not the idea. This is idea of improving the rights of people in the country, in the world, anywhere, without the exceptions. And it's not easy, like you, 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 you catch the, the right point. Because uh, simply 
government didn't allow them special procedures to enter the country. Yeah, exactly. So, so think long term. You know, like you may not notice even the change. You know, like as I say, what we do. We, we're not like uh, McDonald's, we're not fast food, we are slow food. You know, like in France, you go, you, you eat lunch for three hours, you have wine, then, then you have dessert, then you have salad, then you have something else. So, no... But it works, you can say that it works. This it, mechanism works. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's still, new, it's still a new mechanism, and we... You know, we are optimists, and you should be optimists. If we if we not believe in it, I should quit job and uh, start doing something else. But we're building the bricks, you know, of the big wall, you know, small bricks here, 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 and eventually, you know, like when you will be on my age, you may see some change, but me probably not. So uh, some countries is better, and, uh, and, and I can give you another example, like Sri Lanka, for example. It was a horrible war in 2009, then the procedures, of course, you know, as I said, the UN has no police, we cannot go there, we cannot just stop. But there, you know, all the work was done, the reports, the, you know, special commission of inquiry and so on. Now, there is a new government in Sri Lanka, they accept it, and hopefully, eventually, you will get some redress, you will get some, you know, for those people who are dead, you cannot help, but, but at least there will be some closure like the other country I can tell you is Cambodia. You know, like, it took 30 years from the Khmer Rouge crime, you know, like war crimes, to the court. But it happened. So, so like, as they say, you know, we are in the law faculty, the, 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 the how you say it in, in English, you know, like, the, 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 the law is, you know, slow, but it's unavoidable, yes? So, like, the, the, it will come. And, and, and I believe in it, you know, like, it, Another, you know, if we, if we talk about the responsibility for, let's say, war crimes, it's like we have International Criminal Court, but it's also young. It's a baby, just a baby. How many years it's working, you know, like, so, so it's need to have time, you need to have acceptance, and then that's the role for you. You will do it, so, okay. Any, any more questions on this, like uh, effectiveness of the, of the recommendations? No, and also look, they are different. Just give you a comment on effectiveness. Think about like <clears throat> this is the the variety of, of things what you can do with human rights. You have activists, you know, like Human Rights Watch, Amnesty, some local NGOs who are like the most upfront fighters for human rights. They risk their life, they go public. They, they're not compromising the most kind of uh, focus. Then you have, then you have like uh, other organizations or like other groupings which are less, you know, less, uh, how to say, uh, straightforward. Then is a role for UN. So like all those different groupings working on human rights, they complement each other. So it's the role for UN and let's say, we as a UN, we are member states, yes? Like member states are telling us what to do. So they will come and meet with this, you know, universal periodic review and so on. If we try to put uh, member states and NGOs and fighters together, they will not come. They will just say, no, we'll not sit around the table with the terrorists. So, okay, sit with us around the table with, when we raise the issues so, such and such. So you have different approach or different levels and all of them are needed, you know? So, so um, what is most effective? As I said, sometimes it's public opinion, that's the, or the, the world public opinion, uh, naming, the shaming the states. It's, uh, that's probably the, the only like, way what we can do, but also it's engaging, working together, technical cooperation, what you need. Do you need expertise? We can come and work with you. So, so it's not just shaming, but you know, like work together. Okay, so now we move to treaty-based human rights bodies. So like as I mentioned, treaties as you know, conventions, covenants, which create, um, put the procedures to assist 
the state part is to act on the recommendation, uh, recommendation contained in the concluding observations or decisions on or on case uh, brought under individual complaints. Because like in some treaty bodies, you can write individual complaint. If you feel that you, all your mechanism in your country, you have no response, you can find it on the you know, Geneva website. You, you write urgent appeal to Nahla, and uh, she, can, uh, she can respond quickly, you know, call or whatever, send a letter to, to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and say, you know, there is a person in Tatarstan, which they know I know. It's, uh, but, uh, but I'm just saying the, um, there, there is also individual complaints in some, some not in the CEDO. Um, and what... Uh, oh, whoops. Um, like all treaty bodies require states to address follow-up, uh, but some of those, they already have, um, they adopted formal follow-up procedures. So, um, CEDO, uh, Committee on Elimination of Racial Discrimination, Committee Against Torture, uh, Committee on Enforced uh, Disappearances, they, they have uh, formal follow-up procedures. Um, and those treaty bodies, which I mentioned here, they request uh, um, to report for the states on measures taken in response to specific recommendations or priority concerns. Uh, that are rapidly implementable. So that's what, what you were saying. You know, some of those, it's basically, it's not just talk. You know, the, the, the treaty bodies will, uh, will basically request, please tell us what you did in the last year on uh, specific um, observations or what the measures you take to address what, you are, what we ask. And um, again, uh, you know, it's, a, it's UN, it's a, it's a formal system, so you, you, you cannot just write whatever you want, I mean, for the states. You, you need to be serious also in this. So, um, um, and then those committees can appoint a rapporteur or coordinator on follow-up on the specific uh, issue, and this person will be responsible to um, assess this uh, report, those measures. You know, are they just nice round words or they are more solid and, and so on? Uh, okay, and now we're going back to, um, to our initial discussion, which is, uh, how much time I have? Somebody's. Um, like, like follow up, uh, what, on what we're following up, like why we're following up. Uh, you know, as I said, there are several, like I go over this, this different mechanism, and uh, the follow up process is on the findings and recommendations on UN human rights mechanisms and bodies, and those recommendations, as I said, there are many of them, many. Um, and uh, recommendation issues by treaty bodies, recommendations issued by special procedures, uh, recommendations, oops, I think we have many, the same slide. Um, recommendation coming from universal periodic review, uh, resolutions and decisions of Human Rights Council or General Assembly, and the work of the subsidiary bodies, like um, of Human Rights Council, like, um, Expert Mechanism on Human Rights of Indigenous People, Forum on Minority Issues, Social Forum, or Forum on Business and Human Rights. So those are mechanisms, like in addition to what I taught, uh, which they called subsidiary bodies of the Human Rights Council. Um, this, I think, we, because this is, this is actually to the treaty bodies, so I think we can go... Um, to this one, which is basically the topic of this. Took me a while to get there. Uh, so why we doing the holistic approach to follow up 
to recommendations. Uh, we, you know, after our experience, like you ask us, like what we do about this, like what we start analyzing, we realize when you do the holistic approach, you mean like, I mean, from different bodies, the recommendation, we put them in the one grouping, like right to education or right to health and so on. Then they reinforce each other and uh, they maximize the potential for implementation. Because if the country receives 100 recommendations from different bodies on one issue, for the big country, when you have a lot of people in Ministry of Foreign Affairs, then somehow manage to sort it out. Where is the treaty body? Where is the special procedure? And they can put it together and try to have a, like one approach. But for the country, which you may have three people in the foreign ministry working on the, on the human rights, then it's very difficult because it's like, it's enormous work, it's an enormous number of recommendations. So it's, if you put them together, then it's easier for the countries to follow up on this. And I just give you an example of Russian Federation in uh, recent years. So universal periodic, just how many recommendations there are, yes? On universal periodic review, there were 231 recommendations and 163 were accepted. On the covenant and civil political rights, there were 43 areas of concern and recommendations. Uh, on CAT, there were 39 recommendations. On CEDO, the last review, Russia will come the review this year, there were 31 recommendations. On CERT, there were 60. Uh, on Conven Covenant on Economic Social Rights, there were 55. And uh, totally, approximately, because even you cannot, you see like even for us, we cannot even say exactly because they are like recommendations, observations, you know, different uh, declarations. So you see the number is between 527 to 530. And imagine, you know, like some of those recommendations is like they're very simple and kind of, um, how to say, straightforward, practical. But some of the recommendations could be written like complicated. You not even understand what this recommendation is like about. So how you can follow on 500 recommendations, you know, like in coherent way. You need to make them, you know, by a team, by, by cluster, where they like, you know, social economic rights or civil and political rights. So it's easier for the state and it's easier for us because even for us, we, you know, we, we cannot find out, you know, exactly where, who, what did uh, on specific, uh, on specific uh, area. And what it is um, holistic approach, why we adopt it, you know, in, in office of the High Commissioner for, for Human Rights. Uh, holistic approach is our strategy on an integrated follow-up to recommendation from all human rights mechanisms, including universal periodic review. And a holistic approach is an opportunity to strengthen OHCHR efforts to provide effective support to states and other stakeholders in implementing recommendations at the country level. And this holistic approach, uh, it's kind of put us in the center as a clearinghouse, as a place where we, let's say, know and control and have information on all recommendations as it was mentioned in the Human Rights Council resolution. And what, um, just to unpack what we mean by the clearing house role. Um, we're facilitating, we're organizing exchanges of good practices among the state, uh, how, you know, how successful they implement the recommendations. So let's say, if Brazil has a good example on implementing recommendations on right to education, then we organize a meeting, let's say, with uh, South Africa or like other countries which they have problem with uh, human rights to education. And then we say, you know, Brazil will tell, you know, we did this, this, this. 
how to follow on this recommendation. So that's the, then we facilitating also um, technical cooperation request uh, between the states. So like the state, one state uh, would like to get technical uh, cooperation or technical assistance, how to work on recommendations related to right to education. And we can provide this package how, how you do it. Then it's also, um, we, you, there, is, there is a universal periodic review trust fund uh, which is also helping states, those who have no either knowledge or funds, to, to work on implementation. So we can actually provide through the trust fund money to the states to follow up on UPR recommendations. Um, and also we want to serve as a, as a connector between all those different mechanisms, what I, what I told you, in the role of following up. So, Let's say our colleagues in Geneva can, can work between treaty bodies, special procedure, UPR process, and other human rights mechanisms. What else we do with the holistic approach uh, as a, our strategy? We also disseminate information. So basically we increase advocacy and efforts to disseminate outcomes of recommendations of all human rights mechanisms including those of UPR. Uh, how it's done also, like it was a question about the, the states, yes? Like, this is a public information. This is like a UN public information. There's nothing about, secret about this. So like, member state, if you're a member state, you cannot just say, you, you cannot say to UN, no, you cannot distribute information which is public, which well, you already accepted as a state. So, so that's our role. We provide this venue and provide information to people in the member states what's happened, what the recommendations they are, or what, what, the, what the other state recommended. And then we also, this is, uh, we strengthen partnership with other UN, you know, like Office of the High Commissioner is like very small part of UN. There are other parts of UN. So we work with other parts of UN, uh, peace missions and uh, regional organizations civil society organizations and others to share this information, so as to multiply. Um, and uh, again, you know, like how, how, we, how we work on it, like as I said, we, we uh, provide information on the outcomes, uh, we, we publish, we make meetings, we, we meet with people, we meet with NGOs just to provide this uh, information. And then part of our role also as a, if we have a field presence or not, we, we also continue dialogue with the government and uh, uh, on, on those issues. So let's say if there is a specific recommendations and some, some uh, requests from, from those uh, um, recommendations, we meet in the country and we talk about them like how you do it, do you need support or you know, what we can do together about this. Um, we also, um, if the country requests, we provide uh, methodological advice and support to analyze those outcomes. You know, so we, we basically, it's not only you know, what the recommendations, but also tell or help states to, to work how you do it, how you put it together. You know, like what the methodology you use, you know, what, what the what the framework you use to, to cluster those um, different recommendations. And also, we work uh, with the member states, as I mentioned earlier, uh, example of uh, Tatarstan, to work on uh, national strategies, plans, roadmaps, on implementations uh, and integration of uh, human rights uh, from all different uh, mechanisms. Um, and on technical uh, advisory ser services and technical um, uh, capacity, uh, we, um, you know, like through specific projects, uh, uh, like workshops, you know, like we in Russia, for example, have several workshops with the regional ombudsman 
uh, in different regions on recommendations, how you do it, how, how it's important and, and so on. And uh, also creating tools and system uh, to, like you asked, like how, we, how to follow, how to report. Um, and also facilitating the consultations or involvement of all stakeholders, like NGOs, organizations, academics, government. Uh, and then we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we also sharing practices, promoting international cooperation. So like between the states, between the different organizations, we also share um, those, um, those, those best practices. Okay, so we came uh, almost to the end. Uh, so I will just want you to take home those three messages, like why holistic approach is important. Uh, because we aim to improve respect, protection, and fulfillment of all human rights for all people all over the, the world. Uh, we, to improve realization of human rights and based on those recommendations in all countries in the world. And to strengthen our efforts to provide uh, effective support. Because if we are cut, if, we, if we're not working in the one house in our office, you know, different parts, like people who work with special procedure work separately, people who work with treaty bodies work separately, we in the field work separately, universal periodic review, we not talk to each other, then the effect even for our office is not, is not as strong as it could be as is one. So, that's uh, basically it. And if you have any, any questions, uh, we, I think we still have some small time for it. And um, how much? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. So, please. Uh, yes. Uh, now I think it's it's maybe I, I not said correctly. Like Russia has a plan, uh, they own, uh, and they not uh, they basically telling us uh, thank you very much, but we know what to do. So, so uh, it has a plan, but a separate plan. No, like it's it's Russia it has a right, it's a state, so like they can do whatever they want. They basically telling to us. That's what I told you, like we, have, we can share the experiences, the spe you know, some things and say, no, we know all of it, let us decide what we, what we do or not. But there is no formally adopted a national plan which will be on the level of prime minister, basically saying, you know, like in, from 2015 to 2020, we will follow specific steps, you know, by this, you know, we'll do this and so on. Why? It's politics, probably, you know, like it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not easy to answer, you know, like uh, maybe some of... <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think it comes from... Um, okay, maybe I'll try to answer like this, because maybe there is no full acceptance, or like there is still let's say human rights, we're talking about universal human rights. Russia was around the table in 48 when the system was established and declaration was, was written. Then, uh, you know, like Russia is very, you know, very good in signing, you know, different treaties and, and so on. So Russia is a part, very important member or part of UN. Russia believe in UN more, let's say, than US. But at the same time, in recent years, you have not only Russia, but other states start questioning this. You know, like, are the human rights really universal? You know, like, maybe they are only Western idea. You know, like, and we are not Western, or maybe we are, but not all Western. Maybe we are more like Eastern Orthodox. So maybe not all our ideas were reflected in this body of human rights. So I think it's not 
fully embracing and saying this is our full system and we agree with all, all, the, all the system. And some areas in human rights where Russia will say have a different opinion, then they will oppose it. So that's why you may have uh, resistance to basically say, okay, we'll make a national plan, we'll take it as a template, everything what is there in the human rights uh, system will just do in the countries. Because in some rights, I'm not saying all, but some rights, China, Russia, I don't know, Brazil, or other countries, they may have different view. So they don't want to have it like a blanket saying, oh, we're taking all the, you know, all the rights as, as they are. So, and the other thing is like, uh, it could be also the state, you know, like the, they are quite, quite a lot of issues. So I think, um, how to say, you need to have a political will. You know, like you need to have a strong political will to do it. Uh, the national action plan process is not easy and then it's like commitments you will put it publicly uh, and say you know we aim to improve this in two years or one year or five years so it's like a public promise yes if we say we will have universe like full respect let's say as much as we can to respect disabled rights it costs a lot of money I'll give you one example. Let's say if Russia say, you know, in the plan, then in 2017 we'll have like universal uh, high level of respect of physical, mental disabilities in Russia. Do, can you name the, for example, take the uh, Russian metro, which is historical, how much it will cost to make it accessible for people with physical disabilities? I can say roughly maybe like a billion dollars. You know, if you want to protect the historical metro station and then make all the elevators and stuff, you know, it's very deep, it, it will be not easy, yes? So, so for this, you need to make a decision. What is important for you? Disabled rights or something else as a government? Because it comes also with money. Education, the same. If you say, we will aim for this level of free education in the high standard which comes with money. So that's why a lot of states, they don't want to put those plans because they don't want to look stupid or fool. You know, like we promise and then we not deliver. So that's the, that's the problem. If you know, it's not necessarily just bad will, it's just the work to be done is a lot. The other one, I can tell you the, the you know, issues related to health is also, uh, you know, here in Tatarstan it's better than in other parts of Russia, but generally it's also a lot of efforts, a lot of funds. This is, this is kind of easier part, but then it's also the issue in effective protecting of the rights, it's an issue of changing mentality. You know, like you remember, like in the beginning, I was talking about the change. We naturally, everybody resists change because after change what? We don't know. So it's better to keep status quo. So, so that's another thing like the mental resistance to change, to do something else is not necessarily, and it's not only unique to Russia. They are, you know, there are other countries which, which of course, you know, do the same or similar, they, they not, fully embracing, they not, um, in some areas they are good, in some areas they, they not, uh, they're good in the, so to say they are just bad countries and good countries, I can tell you, in any country in the world, you know, they are serious issues related to human rights. So there is no, you know, there is no one country which we can say, no, we don't need to work there, it's perfect, they get, you know, uh, uh, good mark. So, okay. Then another question, and I think we will uh, close because. Yeah. Oh, you yes, please.
Yes, like I mean, I, I know there are more difficult cases, but I still believe like uh, even in those, let's say, hard, difficult cases, they still, you know, they still care what, what the world, what the world opinion is saying. It's maybe, it's more difficult, it's more long term, but it's still, uh, it's not totally rejection. You know, like if they will reject totally UN system, they will withdraw from the UN, and they not. You know, they will say, I don't need to be a member of UN. So, uh, and I can tell you, like for the country, uh, to be a country, you need to have three things as a country. I mean, as a, this is a joke, yes? Uh, you need to be a member of UN, you need to have a football team, and you need to have beer. And that's, uh, so UN is, uh, is an important part. If you, if you see for all um, new states or, or, you know, like territories which want to become recognized, they, for them, the key to be, uh, to, to have a statehood is to be member of UN. So, uh, so it is important. I mean, although they will behave like this, they will say no, but look, even if you take uh, North Korea, they still have an ambassador in New York and diplomats there in the UN. If they say we don't care, they, why they will send it there? So we see like it's, okay, it's posturing, it's, it's, it's difficult. And also there is another, how to say, another problem what we have as a UN with human rights is the stigmatization of uh, having a country reporter or country office. If we, I can tell you, if we want to open office in any country in the world, regardless of the human rights uh, record, they will say, why? Is there a problem with us? If, I, if we want to open a country office in Paris, do you think France will say, okay, fine, open the office in Paris? Say, no, with our country, it's perfect. Go to other countries, those bad countries. So it's everywhere. It's not like, uh, and there are issues, like serious issues also in France. So. Of course, then is the issue of resources, but there's this stigmatization of either thematic or, or country, uh, you know, like, and the presence is, is like, if we have a presence or special rapporteur on the country, it's a problem, it's, it's a something wrong with us. And we try to go away from it. It's okay, there are issues, but the reason is because we want to work with you, not, uh, and they are the most acute issues, so. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, I hope it was useful for you.